Happy Grandparents Day. We have a treat for you. First, enjoy Peg Martin, wonderful mother, terrific grandmother, aunt, sister, and Worcester Senior Center participants, virtual art gallery. Peg's virtual art gallery submission was certainly a family affair. I learned Peg was an artist from her grandson, Nicholas D. Tomaso. Nicholas is a Massachusetts College of Pharmacy graduate and the CVS pharmacist who contacted the Worcester Senior Center to organize a first ever drive-by flu pneumonia and shingles vaccine clinic after Peg gave him our contact information. Nicholas will be conducting the drive-by clinic for the Worcester Senior Center at Vernon Medical Center. To our luck, we are fortunate that Nicholas's father, Blaise D. Tomaso, is the property manager at the Vernon Medical Center and allowed CVS and the Worcester Senior Center to hold the clinic here because the Worcester Senior parking lot is under renovation. Peg's stepdaughter, Denise Hine, and Nicholas sent us Peg's bio to air and show you. Denise is a certified home stager and works closely with Preservation Worcester. Because of Denise's connection with Preservation Worcester, we will now be able to videotape Preservation Worcester's best resources. Peg's other daughter, Darlene, Nicholas's mother, works at the Mass College of Pharmacy and for years has worked with the Worcester Senior Center and the Mass College of Pharmacy service learning students. Darlene also volunteered her time to assist us with the mock drive-by flu clinic. And of course, you will all recognize the name Bob Harrington, the Worcester Senior Center mindful meditation instructor and Peg's brother. Today's program was truly a collective family effort and this is what makes our Worcester Senior Center and our Worcester community so special. What a heartwarming story to honor Parents Day. Let me tell you about Peg now. Peg Harrington Martin is a New Englander by birth, but a European at heart. In her younger years while living in Worcester, Peg had a natural gift for the culinary arts, which she lovingly passed on to her two daughters. After meeting and marrying Paul Martin, her creative curiosity grew and changed. Together and with friends, they traveled the world, literally, and visited many spectacular places. Each new destination brought a new cultural experience with food, music, and art. Peg was in love and wanted to savor these experiences. She enrolled in art classes taught by Bonnie Federico, CDA in Grafton, Mass, three decades ago, and the rest, as they say, is history, painting almost daily ever since. There isn't a medium that Pat hasn't tried but her favorite is working with oils and painting with, with, with stills. She has an eye for detail and can patiently exercise these little works of art and they look like masterpieces that influenced her. After Peg's virtual art gallery, we have a, with a focus on flowers, we have a perfect segue. Learn basic flower arranging techniques from Sally Jablonski, Herbert Berg florist. Sally will explain how to set up your own toolbox, learn basic flower arranging techniques, and learn how to identify flowers. From all of us from the Worcester Senior Center, happy Grandparents Day. Stay safe, stay hydrated, and stay connected by watching Channel 192. Happy Grandparents Day. I hope you are all well and finding safe ways to enjoy your precious family. Wishing all the grandparents out there a happy Grandparents Day to those who are with us and those who are no longer with us. Have a great day. Happy Aunt Grandparents Day to all. We miss you and hope everything's going okay for you. Take care. Chúc các bậc ông bà, các ông nội, bà nội, ông ngoại, bà ngoại được thật nhiều sức khỏe để vui hưởng tuổi già với con cháu. Cảm ơn. Thank you. Happy Grandparents Day. So grateful for grandparents. We miss you and we love you. 
Happy Grandparents Day! 今天是祖父祖母的节日,祝天下的爷爷奶奶们节日快乐! Hello, Happy Grandparents Day! Stay, uh, all you folks stay safe out there in all these difficult times. Um, hope to see you all soon. Hola, feliz día de los abuelos. Manténgase seguro, segurado, y en estos tiempos difíciil. Um, espero verlo um, pronto. Cuídense. Happy Grandparents Day to all the nanos and papas out there. We miss you. We love you. Stay safe, and we hope we see you soon. Happy Grandparents Day. I hope you guys are staying healthy and well. And I just wanted to wish you a happy Grandparents Day. I know this is a Grandparents Day that's unlike others in the past, but I hope you're finding a way to connect with your loved ones so you know just how very special you are. Enjoy. Bye-bye.
Hi, um, welcome to Herbert Burke Florist. My name is Sally Jablonski. Most of you know me from the Worcester Senior Center. And we're here today doing a video because we can't meet in person. And one of the things that we'll be doing today is seeing what tools we need for your toolbox, some basic plant identification, flower identification, and then we're gonna make a flower arrangement um, using some flowers that we have here. So um, people always ask me, what do I have in my toolbox? So what I did is, is I bought a brand new set, which you don't have to do, but these are some of the basic things that you should have. I use a knife, um, but if you don't feel comfortable with a knife, you can use a little pruner like that. Or if you don't have that, you can use a scissor I suggest you have two kinds of scissors, one scissor to cut plants with, and then if you're gonna be using ribbon or fabric, a ribbon or a fabric scissor. Um, another item to have in your toolbox is a wire cutter. Um, and I suggest you only cut wires with this and not with your branch cutter or this one, your pruner. Don't use that, just use that to cut your your hard stems with don't use this for a wire and then also um, as we get more technical this is a little jewelry winder and um, this is a nice tool to have but you, you don't necessarily have to have that as you begin but these are a nice nice set and some nice tools and I do suggest you have your own toolbox especially during this COVID time so that when you're done with your tools you wipe them down and you know you're the only ones that have touched it. And I just, you know, have a basic little toolbox. It was my dad's. I inherited it. I inherited his tools. And there's other ones in here. And so as we go through other videos, we'll be, I'll be showing you more tools and we'll be adding more things to the toolbox. So for right now, I'm just going to lay them in there nicely. Not in any order, just to get them out of the way. Um, Another item, and probably many of you have one, you can see it's been used, um, is a uh, glue gun. Um, is a very useful tool to have. Um, I use it all the time. There's some other adhesives that have come out. We have some glue dots and we have some glue strips. They're very good when you're arranging, you wanna do something different. Um, I use them all the time. Um, that's something nice also for the toolbox, oasive adhesive strips and dots. And then something else that I use all the time too is cold glue. It's oasis floral adhesive. Um, again, these things you don't have to have, but I'm just showing you some of the things that are nice to have. And then as we go through this, if you wanna add things or if you want to call me at the shop and find out where you find these things, I can tell you as far as that goes too. So those are the basics. And then also uh, from Oasis is Oasis tape. I, we use this when we, I'll show you when we start arranging and we use this when we arrange and hold the foam in the container so it doesn't come out. So those are the basics of the tools. And now we're going to go into, uh, some flower identification, some names of flowers. Uh, one of the things when I was getting ready for this program was um, I found my old science book from second grade, How Plants Grow. And in there, there was some basic, and it was kind of cool, um, some different types of flowers. So, you know, in my early years, I was learning my flowers. My dad had a flower garden, a vegetable garden. My mom had a flower garden. And I lived right across from a greenhouse right in Millbury on McCracken Road. So um, in my young years, I was outside playing, always with flowers and plants. And I've enjoyed it um, throughout my life. I've been a florist now for about 40 years and looking now to get more into teaching. So we've been just a... These are carnations. Um, this is a hot pink carnation. Uh, it's a nice color. They're very long lasting. Um, I know a lot of people don't like carnations. I think people overdid using the reds, whites, and pinks. But what has happened now, there's many different colors of carnations. So when you're using your arranging, um, take a look at the many colors 
that the carnations have, they're very long lasting. And it's something I always say, it's kind of funny. The more expensive the flowers, the less they last. The least expensive last a lot longer. So when you ask, want to find out how long flowers last. And then I just took some basic flowers. Um, these are chrysanthemum daisies. I have them in lavender. I have them in white. The chrysanthemums will be coming out now. They'll be in different colors. Um, they'll be starting now with fall right after Labor Day. You'll get some nice fall colors coming in. Um, we have Alstroemeria or Peruvian Lily. Um, this is a popular flower. It's long lasting. It's starting to come in many different colors. Uh, we use this a lot. And then also, we have roses, um, and this actually has a little bit of fragrance in it. Uh, a lot of the roses have lost their fragrance um, because they've been bred for uh, shipping qualities. Many of our flowers are coming from South America, so it's kind of nice when you're arranging and you actually there's still a fragrance left in the rose. And... These are little spray roses, also in the hot pink. I thought those would kind of go nice with this analogous pinks and purples color scheme. Um, I took a class this summer to get back on some of the color reels and some of the terminology. So you, you know, it's never too you're never too old to learn something. I'm constantly taking a class doing something. And then. These flowers that are left, this is wax flower, which is a nice purple. It also comes in a pink. This is status. Um, we've used that in class. And then of course, everybody loves baby's breath. These flowers we call filler flowers. Uh, they're the smaller ones. We'll put those in at the end to fill in the holes. And then lastly, just for something that's a little bit different, many of you will probably have these in your garden. Seed them. Right now they're green and as they, they blossom, they'll get a little bit more pinkish color. So it'd be kind of neat to, to watch them bloom. So those are kind of the flowers I chose today. And this is my first video, so bear with me as we go through everything. Um, and then also for greens, I'm just using our basic leather fern that we've used in class so many times. Um, I do have it in water so it stays fresh. And remember, once the arrangements are done, you need to add water so don't forget to do that so that's our basic tools plant identification um we're going to start with a flower arrangement right now i just took a plastic bowl um something very inexpensive you can use this bowl just as is, or you could place it into a container, like if you had a punch bowl or something like that, if you wanted to do that. This is Max Life Oasis. Um, it's the only Oasis I use. Uh, it's a relatively new product brought out by Oasis in the past couple of years. It is 100% biodegradable in just a little over 500 days, whereas before the other Oasis was not. So this is the one that I use um and i use it regularly i make sure it says max life and also it has better lasting qualities for the flowers i'm going to use my older knife today not my fresh knife i don't want anything to go wrong and what we're going to do is we're going to use the oasis tape this is a little bit stickier than regular tape and we're just going to tape the foam in so that as this gets transported it doesn't fall out. And when I'm greening, I always try to make sure that I cover the tape so that when it's sitting on the table, you're not looking at tape. So I'm gonna take a few pieces of my leather fern and I'm gonna break them off. Um, this size bowl is a little bit bigger than the ones we usually do in class, um, but because this is a demonstration, I wanted to show you a little bit bigger arrangement. So what we're doing, as we go around the outside, I'm just picking off some of the longer pieces. I'm putting them into the foam and I'm making sure it's about an inch that goes into the foam with the stem with no greens on it because if you put greens into the foam, that causes um, 
the bacteria to grow. So we don't want, we want to make it as clean as we can. Um, so what we're going to do, and then these other small pieces, we're just going to put in the middle. Um, they don't have to be perfect. You don't have to make an arrangement of greens. It's just a base to cover this. And we're just putting them in like that. And this is what we call in the flower industry greening. Um, it's one of the first steps that you do. Um, this is almost done. and just pick that up and once we're done we take a look at it. you may want to add a little bit more greens we may want to add a little bit of eucalyptus or something like that but this is just a basis to start with and what i'm going to do is a very traditional basic traditional all-around arrangement with our fillers and flowers um, next month we're going to do something that's fall maybe with a little bit of halloween type of thing and we're going to add a different technique each week but th uh, each month but this one is just going to be for um a basic arrangement nothing fancy so i'm going to start with my hot pink carnations i'm going to cut the stem on an angle and i'm going to put one right in the middle and the reason why we cut it on an angle is that it's a lot easier to insert into the foam and then what we're doing is we have an imaginary round that we're having our head and what we're doing is we're following the pattern we're just going to go all the way around and we're inserting the sides on an angle not straight up and down the only one that's straight up and down is the top one and then we're going to put one here and then we're going to put one here so that as you can see that it's all converging into one point that if you looked under the table that all these stems would come down into one point so it's just a, a basic start to a very basic arrangement one of the things we do in the shop is we do recycle all our greens and we I just and bring those to the landfill the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use some daisies and again I'm going to use these lavender daisies and I'm going to break them off and then I'm going to put them all the way around like that and again so we're within this circle and we're going to and, you know sometimes some of them aren't so good so we're not going to use those we we'll just pull them off put some in here again all along on the same angle like this this we're going to use our alstroemeria next and i may add some more daisies afterwards I like to take the greens off because the greens will turn yellow before the flower goes. So I take off as much greens as possible. And then again, I'm gonna insert them with an angle. And again, make sure as you're putting them in the foam that you're pushing it into the foam so you have, so the stems will drink water. Believe it or not, they are drinking water through the oasis. So we're going to put it like that hopefully you can see all that we're going to use our pink roses and again roses have a lot of different colors that are coming out so take a look at the many colors there's more colors than just red and i'm going to put those in a triangle one two three Move that over a little bit. I'm gonna use these sedums because it's always nice to have a little surprise that as the arrangement starts to grow, there's something still blooming. I'm gonna, and I'm gonna use that green as a little mixture of the pinks and lavenders. 
and then we have some spray roses. So as you can see, there's no hot pink in the middle here. So what we're gonna do is just add the hot pink. So it just kind of breaks up the color scheme. There should be a couple more in here. And I think other than using the baby's breath, we are gonna keep it right in that analogous color scheme, just within the pinks and the purples. Um, it's a popular color. We do an awful lot of that combination. So if you don't know you're sending flowers and you don't know what to send, um, usually something in the pinks and the purples would be uh, a safe thing to order. So our flowers are mostly done. I'm going to put a couple of daisies here in the back. I don't like those. I'm going to pull those out. Again. And the advantage when you're using your knife is that you can use your left and your right hand and you don't have to put the tool down. Um, but don't think you have to use a knife. You, my class has many people, you will use the flower scissors or they'll use uh, pruners or bunch cutters, which either or, whatever you want. I prefer to use a knife. And then some of our fillers, like I said, this wax flower is a nice purple. It comes from Australia. Many of our flowers are coming from different countries. I went to the Stockbridge School of Agriculture and there was many greenhouses there while I was at school, but they're all gone now, and mostly all the local growers have, are gone, and they're, my, the flowers are coming from South America, they're coming from California, they're coming from New Jersey. Other than a, a farm, there's very little local flowers being grown in Massachusetts. So, so what, when you're adding the filler flowers, what you want to do is it gives it just a little bit more interest. It's a little bit more interesting to look with, look at on the table. Um, it's a little bit more texture. We're going to add a little bit of this purple status. And this flower is a great flower to dry. So if afterwards you want to save it and use it in a wreath, um, it's a nice flower to reuse, recycle. And again, we're putting it in where there's holes, where we think we need a little bit of pop of color to mix the colors in the arrangement. And so that's kind of where we're at with the arrangement. And then we're gonna add some baby's breath. We're going to add some baby's breath. And we're going to put that in between and it gives it the fluffiness. And I'm not going to overdo the baby's breath so it doesn't look like an arrangement of just baby's breath. That's what we're doing. And as I look at it, it looks like it needs a little bit more greens. So we're gonna add a little bit more greens to the bottom so that when it sits on the table, you don't see the foam, you don't see the tape and it looks like the arrangement and the container belong together. So we're gonna add a little bit more of that. So. so 
so this is our arrangement. Again, like I said, we recycle all our greens. And what you can see now is that it's all round and it's all it within the same space. And again, now as we were talking about flowers, um, we have the carnations, we have roses, we have Alstroemeria, we have the spray roses, we have daisies, wax flowers, status, and baby's breath. All very common flowers, but as you mix the colors up, you can make a very, very interesting arrangement. Okay, so now what we're gonna do um, is just talk a little bit about plants, some of the names of the plants, um, and just give you a few care tips. We'll do that each week, each month too. So um, this is called a dish garden, and I know probably many of you have gotten these as gifts. Um, this is a Diefenbachia, this is a rubber plant, this is a philodendron, this is a prayer plant, and this is a dracaena. And usually within that, it's all plants that have the same type of a growth habit. Um, what's important about plants is not to overwater them. So I suggest that you just take a, you know, the moss up and see if it's wet, it's moist. There's no drainage in these. So if you overwater them, they will die. You can also underwater them, but most often when I'm checking plants out, people have overwatered. So I wanna caution people not to overwater. You don't have to water a plant every single day. Um, and especially with these dish gardens because there's no drainage in the bottom and it's a popular item. We sell an awful lot of them in the store and I'm just trying to help you as far, and this can be low light. It doesn't even have to, to be in the sun. So that's, a, that's our little dish garden. Um, this is our peace lily. Um, this is a very popular plant. It gets little white blossoms on it. Um, the most important thing is not to let this one dry out. This one doesn't mind having its feet wet, so you can keep this, you could actually keep this in water. So, um, and when you're doing the fish, um, this is the type of plant that you put in the, the vase with the roots in the bottom and the fish growing. So this plant needs a lot of water. So and if you ever come home and it's like this all the way flopped down, Put it in the sink and just let it soak for a couple hours and it will come back but it does 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 like a lot a lot of water and and then what we're going to do um is just a couple of things people ask me how do you do this how do you do that um this is a uh, spider plant and you can see the spider plant makes babies and this is how you propagate a new plant. So you don't have to root them. You can just cut them off. They've already started a few little roots on the bottom. I put some soil in here that's wet. This does have a hole in the bottom of the clay pot. I just put my finger in and make a little hole and then just pinch it so it holds in. And then I'm going to do the same, you know, and this is nice too. If you have a, you know, heirloom plant from your grandparents or parents, you want to keep it going. You can start a new plant like that. You know, my grandmother was heavily into flowers too. So I spent a lot of time with flowers with her also. And then also, um, with my grandfather. So I know this month is, is grandparents day and I certainly remember all the times I spent with them. And as you can see, we're gonna make a whole new plant from just a few of the babies. So there, so then what we're going to do is it needs to have water, a little bit of water. And this, you know, every other day check for water as far as this because it doesn't have an established root system. Um, it's going to need a little bit more water than say like the dish garden. So lots of times with the, to be successful with the plants is knowing what type of water it needs, what it needs and how to do it. 
down on that. I'm just taking off some of the brown edges. If you get any brown edges on the tips of your plants, you can just use your knife or scissor and just cut them off on that. So that's our spider plant. And then a different type of propagation for this plant here is called Swedish Ivy. And this propagates really well in water. So if you just take a couple of stems and put it in water, in about a week you're going to have roots and then you can plant it in a pot of soil similar to what I had and it grows fast itself. So that's all you have to do. And then in a week, you'll see some roots and then you can plant it in soil so you can have another plant. So those are two types of plant propagation. I also have a plant and soil science degree that from UMass Amherst. Um, those are some of the things we learned in college way back then. And also what I wanna say is, um, this is a product that we use. Um, is leaf shine. I do caution you not to spray this in an enclosed room um, to spray it a little bit more outdoors. If your plants have a little dusty on them, this will give it a nice, nice um, shine to them as far as it goes. And of course, you know, at the end, I do caution you, you know, to disinfect your, your knives, not only for, you know, COVID-19, but also for other bacteria, um, the flowers and the plants. The flowers don't like bacteria so it's best to have a clean knife when you go to start arranging and even when you're doing your propagation as far as that goes and so um with the flower arrangements i want to remind you to water um, to add water every day as far as those goes they're different from the plants you're not going to overwater them make sure you have water and if you have a pack of a preservative use that in your arrangement to make it last longer but if you don't the nice clean water will help your arrangements last longer. And as far as plants, you know, watch what the plant is, watch the water, but most often people will over overwater plants more than underwater them as far as it goes. And the succulents are popular. Um, we have some succulents here, some little ones. They don't need a lot of water at all. So what you wanna do is just uh, maybe once every 10 days, something like that but it, so you know just you know they don't need as much water like say as this piece of lily that needs a ton of water so just watch your water as far as your plants um and that's it okay so what we're going to do is we're going to continue with another arrangement that's similar but just a little bit different just to show you some of the variations on some of the basic flower arranging and what i've chosen um is some purples and I've chosen a monochromatic color scheme. So everything's gonna be within the purples and the lavenders. And we're gonna make a, an arrangement that's similar, but just a touch different, just to start to show you the different styles of arrangements that you can do. So again, we're using the exact same container. We're using the Max Life Oasis. And one of the things that's best is that when you're wetting it in a bucket of water, to wet it first, don't use it dry, and then also have the holes up in the arrangement so there's the holes stay up so that when you go to water it, the water goes in and goes in a lot faster. And it's best when you're soaking the oasis, you know, a good five, five, six minutes so it's all the way through because if your flower hits a dry spot in the oasis, it's not gonna absorb water and it's gonna go like that. So we don't wanna do that. So again, what we're going to do is we're going to do greening similar to what we did. Um, lots of times, as far as people will ask, what are these things on the back of the leather fern? Those are spores. These are just like fern, if you want to think of them as fern seeds. They're not bugs. They're not harmful. So don't be afraid of them. Certain times of the year, you'll find more of that on the greens uh, than most. But what we're going to do is we're going to, again, just green 
I know I go fast. I've been doing this a long time. I'm trying to slow down a little bit. And we're just going to do the greens exactly the same way. We're going to hide the oasis. And again, you can use a lot of different greens, but for a basic flower arrangement, we're just using a staple. Um, it's called leather fern. There are farms of these down in Florida, uh, and these are grown under shade cloths. So it's not something that's native to here. Though you can grow them as an indoor house plant. So again, just a basic arrangement. Try and use up all the greens. These are a little bit yellow. I'm not going to, but don't just try. Don't just use all the tips. So what we're going to do is with this and now with this monochromatic color scheme, is again you can see um, that I chose some purple carnations and look at that purple. It's just a gorgeous color as far as purple goes. So please, um, when you're arranging, don't say, "Oh my God, no carnations." So instead of putting the carnation smack in the middle, this time. I'm going to put three carnations in a triangle right at the top. So I'm going to leave the top open so it's, it's a little more like what we call open and airy. So we have one, two, three, and then I'll put the other carnations out to the side. So with this arrangement, what we did so we've left the center open so that as we can have more flowers come out of the top and give it a little bit more open arrangement. This is a little bit more closed. This one's going to be a little bit more open. So now we have the purple carnations. So, you, you know, we're going to begin to see all the different color carnations. So I'm going to be showing the different colors as we go along. And also, um, the, uh, we have Alstroemeria. You can see that that's in uh, purple color. Again, I take the greens off. Uh, some people are allergic to Alstroemeria, so if you start to itch, just use some some leather, some uh, some of the plastic gloves. Um, I don't have a problem with it, but I do encourage you. Not that there's um, anything that at the end of your flower arrangement you do wash your hands because these flowers are coming from a, a different country. So, so what I'm going to do. Again, we're going to use the lavender carnations, uh, daisies, sorry about that. Sometimes you get some daisies that have some real long stems and sometimes they're short. And when you get them, you have to figure out how you're going to use them. Sometimes they're perfect and sometimes they're not. I don't like those either. So we're just going to have them out like that. That one didn't go in. You try again. And also when you're inserting flowers into the foam, don't keep pulling them out and putting them back in again. Um, the, it will make a mess. The uh, foam will start to deteriorate. So just, you know, as you're beginning, just put the flowers in there for your enjoyment. Don't be worrying that it isn't perfect. So again, we're going to take the leaves off the Alstroemeria. I'm going to be putting them in the corners like this. Have them come out a little bit more. And then these are Dendrobium orchids. This is a nice lavender color. So what I wanted to do is put these kind of in the middle so then it starts to come out. You know, so it gives you that that a little bit more open look. So instead of having a carnation on the top, we're going to have the dendrobium orchids in the middle. And I like them all coming out like that. So I'm going to leave it like that. Another flower that's popular within the last 30 years is Lysianthus. Um, it's starting to be, it's coming in more colors other than pinks and purples. Um, some people think they're roses, uh, or to me, they remind me more of morning glories. So just to add like a little pop of purple, 
I'm going to use that. And what I want to do is, is I want to mix it up so that you get a nice distribution of the colors all the way around. But I group the orchids in the top. I think that kind of gives it a bit of impact. This is Liatris. That's one of the only flowers that blooms from the top down. Um, this is what we would call, when we get more into it, a line flower. We're going to use that to come out on the edges to give it a little bit more interest. And again, I'm taking all these off so it gives a straighter line. There's your liatris. Um, I think we need a few more greens. So I'm going to add a little bit more greens to this. Because I can start to see the container. So as you add some, you can always add some more greens afterwards. Mr. Berg used to always tell me that greens cost money to use as, as less as you can. So you don't have to make an arrangement of greens. You can always add more afterwards. So here we are. Again, we're in the purples, the monochromatic color scheme. Um, I like to do it with red. Red is my favorite color. So many of the arrangements I make uh, for different exhibits, I will do in red. And then we'll do that. Here's our purple status. We're going to add that in. And we're going to have the status come out a little bit longer. So it starts to be, again, like I said, a little bit more open. Doing that. Doing that. And a little bit more on that end. Sometimes with the status, the stems, you have to scrape them off a little bit to get them into the foam. We want to add a little, I got a little bit of wax flour left over from the last one. So we're going to use a little bit of that and have that come out. But I do want to stay within the the purple tones. We might as well use our Alstroemeria up. And if you don't want to, you don't remember Alstroemeria. Another name for Alstroemeria is Peruvian lily. So, there's that. So there we have, and I'm going to clean my desk here. tape away and what's nice about um, flower arranging today is that there's a lot of new flowers coming out and a lot of a lot of new tools so there's a lot of things to help you uh, make arrangements there's a lot of things online so I encourage you to watch online and so you can see that you know they're the same container but they're just, you know, a little bit different. Like I said, this is a monochromatic arrangement. This is analogous. This is the pinks and the purples, the mixture, a little bit of baby's breath. This is a little bit, like I said, a little bit more open and airy. This is a little bit more closed. So when you're deciding on your event or your party or, or arrangement for your home, you know, just figure out what the theme is, what the style is, what you like. When you're making it for yourself, it's for your enjoyment. Um, practice, um, it doesn't have to be perfect. I've been doing this for a lot of years. So um, I encourage you, especially with us staying home, um, you know, you get a few flowers, a few flowers from your garden. If you take flowers in from your garden, cut them in the morning and put them in some cool water and let them drink water for a couple of hours before you go to use them. We, we, they need to be conditioned and that's the same thing with the flowers that we get in we condition them we, we take the leaves off we put them in preservative and before we use them 
So normally I would say any questions, but um, this is a video. Again, this is my first video. I'm hoping this comes out great. Um, or like I said, next month we're gonna do do something with fall and have a little fun with Halloween. Um, do a different style arrangement and see how that goes. Um, for, for now, um, that's it. I'd like to thank my videographer, uh, Sandy Mikalak. She's been in the background um, taping me um, and hopefully this, put these in. Um, this comes out great and uh, we'll have some fun through the months. Thank you very much. Happy Happy